Hey guys, so I just wanted to make this video for you. Um, it is um, basically just asking the question of, um, do we love God? Like, do we, do we really love him? You know, because there's a lot of different definitions we have for love. Um, I can love this cookie, or I can love hot sauce, or I can love, you know, um, the shirt you're wearing, or I can love my wife, or, you know, my dog, or... Um, I can, you know, fill in the blank with whatever, whatever you want. Um, there, there's, there's such a wide variety of things that we love, quote unquote, you know, and, and I think, um, it's hard in our culture to differentiate between, um, liking something and, and truly loving something. Um, and, and I think the most important kind of love is a love that you, you can't love something but someone you know what i mean it's, it's it's a relationship um that's the the highest form of love and and the the highest <laughs> truly highest form of love is is love from and with god and to god you know that that i am loved by god and i love god you know um and and that doesn't mean uh just loving god because of the things that he gives me because of the the forgiveness of sins because of the blessings because of the promises because of Rada, 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 you know, um, that, that he, I love him because of who he is. You know, it says that, um, in, I think it's in the Psalms that, that Moses knew the ways of God. Israel knew his deeds and sorry. Um, and, and so with that comes this idea of, you know, the, the Israelites, they understood what God did for them. Um, they understood his, his blessings and his promises and his, you know, curses and whatnot, but, but Moses knew the, sorry, my, my phone's dying. Um, Moses knew the, like the, the ways of God. He knew what he was like. He knew his heart, his joy, his desires, his dislikes, um, the things that, that bothered him, that made him angry. Um, the things that he loved, you know, he, he knew the ways of God. Um, he knew him really well. He was his friend. Um, and, and, you know, and so, there, there's a difference between, um, I know about God, I like God, and, and I know God. I love God. I love Jesus, you know? Um, and that's what I want for you guys. That's what I want for me, you know, is that, that we can be able to say, I love God. I truly do. I love him with all of my heart, you know? And there's this amazing passage, um, sorry, not a passage, it's a quote from John Piper. There's an amazing passage too later on, but, um, but John Piper, he says this quote, um, and he says, the, the critical question for our generation and for every generation is this, if you could have heaven with no sickness, with all the friends you ever had on earth and all the food you ever liked and all the leisure activities you ever enjoyed and all the natural beauties you ever saw um, and all the physical pleasures you ever tasted and no human conflict or any natural disasters, could you be satisfied with heaven if Christ were not there? You know, and the critical question for Christian leaders is this, do we preach and teach and lead in such a way that people are prepared to hear that question and answer with a resounding no, you know, because, you know, let's be honest, you know, if you could go to heaven right now, you could be in the most amazing place in the universe, um, really outside of the universe and, and just be so enamored by everything that's there. You know, would you really miss Jesus? Would you notice it if he wasn't there? Because for most of my life, I would say, no, I would not, <laughs> I, I would not miss him. Um, and, and I, I wouldn't even know him. I wouldn't know why that I would need to miss him. Um, because I grew up as a, as, a, as a kid who, you know, believed in God and, and prayed to him every day and, and appreciated and really loved the things that he gave me. You know, I loved the, the forgiveness of sins and the, and the you know, the, the, the blessings that he gave me, the family that I grew up with, you know, all these things. But I, I didn't really love him. I didn't love him, you know, and th th that's such a big difference, you know. Um, and I think, honestly, it wasn't until the last couple of years, really, that I really knew and I could say with, without any doubt that I love God, you know, because, um, because I, I see who he is now. I, I see, you know, and over the past two years with Terry Lee Cobble, um, reading the Bible recap, it's like every day we're looking for what is God showing me about himself in his word, first and foremost, and then how does it apply to my life? How does it apply to whatever, whatever knowledge, etc. Um, you know, that's great too. But most importantly, what is this book written by and about God 
um, telling me about God? <laughs> you know, um, that's the most important question. You know, and Paul, I think he really had a good grasp of this, of of that balance of what's more important, what's most important. Um, he says in Second Corinthians twelve, he says, "I know a man." Um, he's talking about himself here. That makes it it's very clear in the rest of the passage that he's talking about himself. He says, "I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago was caught up uh, to the third heaven." Um, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Um, and I know that this man um, was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. And so, you know, he goes into the presence of the Lord and and he's literally in heaven. And he's like, I don't know if it was in my, my physical body or if it was just my spirit, but like I was there and I heard amazing things about, you know, just whatever we don't even know what he was talking about but but it's just amazing and it's like oh my gosh you had you just had to be there and like there's no way to describe it i can't even express how incredible it was um and yet he doesn't and that's the weird part you know it's like wait a second so then you know you go on that was written in 55 ad more or less um that's when scholars think uh, that he wrote it. And then seven years later, he writes a letter to the Philippians. He's in jail, either in Ephesus or in Rome. And he's writing this letter to the Philippians and he's saying, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be back soon. Um, and it's going to be great. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see you guys again. And he says for, he's kind of encouraging them right here. And he says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Um, yeah, what shall I choose? What shall I choose? I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. And he's like, you know, man, I, 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 I have these two options in front of me. It's like, I could, I could stay with you guys, you know, and, and continue to minister with you, um, and to build the church, or I could go home. I could go to heaven, you know, and, and actually stay there this time. And, and I would finally be free of these shackles of the, of this pain of this thorn in my flesh, whatever that is, you know, that he talks about right after that passage. And, you know, in, in second Corinthians, you know, it's like, I could, I could be there. I could be with him. You know, and that's what he's thinking. He's not saying, I could go to heaven. He, he says, I, I want to be with Christ. I want to be with him. You know, and, and then as he goes on um, in chapter three, verse seven, he says, you know, he gives this big list in one through six about, about how all these things that he did as a Pharisee, you know, he's like, man, I'm the Pharisee of Pharisee. I'm the Hebrew Hebrews. You know, I'm this really amazing man, quite frankly. And, you know, not sugarcoating that at all. I was an, a, an incredible man in the eyes of men. Um, but I was a evil, disgusting person in the eyes of God. Um, and he says, but whatever gain I had in that past life, right? Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, that everything else in life is worthless in comparison to knowing Christ. That's what he's saying right here. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. That is a very strong word in Greek. It literally means like, like the S word, S-H-I-T. It's like very blatant. He is, you know, being totally serious and saying everything else is worth crap to me um, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. You know, and it's like Paul loved Jesus. It was so obvious, you know, in every single person that he met was like, man, this guy is intense, but he loves Jesus, you know? And it's like, that's the kind of man I want to be like. And that's the kind of person that I hope you want to be like as you're watching this. And if that's not you, if you're, you know, like, honestly, Kelton, I, I really don't know if I, I love Jesus, you know? Um, maybe I do just like him, you know? What, what do we do with that? Um, first off, I think pray, you know, tell God, you know, man, I, I realized that I, I, I think I just like you, Lord. And, and I don't want that. I, I want to love you. 
So Jesus, please help me to love you. Help me to love you with everything that I have so that, so that at the end of my life, I can look back and say, I have loved you well. And the people, more importantly, that people, other people can look at me and say, man, that person loves Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I want to know them better because they know Jesus so well. You know, I, I want to be like them. You know, I want to follow them as they follow Christ. You know, just like Paul says, you know, I want to be um, an example like they are of, of someone who loves Jesus. You know, man, that is what I want. That's, that is truly what I want. Um, and and I, I just hope that you guys do it as well. You know, and so I just really encourage you, you know, whenever you read God's word, open it up and say, Jesus, show me more about you. God, Holy Spirit, Father, Jesus, you know, show me who you are. Help me to see how amazing you are because he's incredible, guys. He made the entire universe. He invented gravity and, and platypi and, and Higgs bosons and, you know, little particles and, and big stars and supernova and nebulae and all these amazing things. Lord. Uh, like he, he made it all. You know, he, but, but the thing is that he sees us and he knows us and he loves us and he, you know, catches every tear that falls and he understands our suffering and he came down to experience our suffering and he, you know, has, has given us all things for the sake of, 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 of living and walking in righteousness. And he made this beautiful earth um, and, and filled it with so many amazing animals and creatures that we have yet to even scratch the surface of discovering and understanding. And, and yet um, he did it all for us so that we could be like him, so that we could walk in obedience to him and be sons and daughters who rule and reign over a beautiful creation. And we broke that. We, we, we are responsible for all the death and suffering that's in this world. And so please don't blame God for that. That's not his fault. It's ours. It's our fault. Um, but he made a way out of that. He came to restore all of this so that we could live with him again. And that is the entire theme of the entire Bible. The, the most important theme um, that, that people would argue is in the Bible is, is that God from, from day one, well, from day six, really, <laughs> he, he makes Adam and Eve and he places them in this garden, this, this place where heaven and earth meet in Eden. And, and he says, man, this is, this is the life right here. I want you to, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, bringing the beauty and the blessings of heaven to the earth so that they are one. Um, and, and that's what we failed to do. We said, no, we want to do it our own way. And we, we messed that up. But God said, I will fix it. I will become a man. I will become the man that you weren't, Adam. And I will restore everything. And I will unite everything, things in heaven and things on earth, in Christ Jesus, so that we can be home together again. And that is my favorite verse of the entire Bible. Revelation um, 21, verse 3. It's the very end of the Bible. Um, probably second last page, more or less, if you're uh, looking at yours. And it says, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. Why? Because God is with us. And that's who Jesus is. He is the with us God, Emmanuel, God with us. That is his desire, is to be with us. And, and my question today is, is that your desire? Do you want to be with him? When you wake up in the morning, when you go throughout your day, when you fall asleep at night, when you listen to love songs or, or whatever you're, you're doing, I do that a lot, actually. Um, when, when you're listening to, to whatever or just thinking about, man, you know, if, if you're single, if you're thinking, man, I, I just wish I had a spouse or if you are married, you know, and, and you're delighting in marriage or you're having struggles with your marriage, are you thinking, man, I want to love them the way Christ loves the church. I want to love them the way the church loves the bride if I'm a woman, you know, like, like, am, am I really thinking that, you know, am I thinking, man, I just want to show Jesus's love to someone new today, you know, and I want to, I want to be a, a representation of him in this earth, you know, and if, if that's you, then that's awesome. And if that's not you, then you are one step away from being that person. You know, all it takes is submitting to Jesus and saying, Lord, I want to be that person. Please make me that kind of person who loves you with everything, every fiber of their being, you know, I'm not there yet. And, and Paul says that too. He's like, man, I haven't achieved this. I'm not perfect. Um, but here's what I am going to do. I'm going to press on, um, to the upward call of God and the prize that is Christ Jesus. I'm going to run this race with endurance. And the minute I, you know, 
get that call from the Lord. And he says, you know, it's your time to go. Um, and we know that he was executed, um, executed by the, by the Romans. Um, you know, he's like, my bags are packed guys. I'm ready to go because I just want to be with him. And, and so I just encourage you guys, um, you know, as you, as you go throughout your day, you know, just invite the Lord into it and say, Lord, I want to be with you or Lord, help me to want to be with you. Help me to love you the way I should. Um, and know that you're never going to stop learning how to love him. Even in heaven, we are always going to be learning more about who he is, learning more of his ways, his deeds, and, 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 and loving him more deeply because of it. Heaven will not be boring. It is the most exciting place ever. And it's because of God fully manifesting his glory, his righteousness, his goodness in all of the earth. That, that's what heaven is. It's, it's, it's being with him. And, and I just want to encourage you guys today, um, seek after it. Because those are the people who, who truly go to heaven are the people who love Jesus. And I want you to love Jesus. I want you to know him. I want you to be with him. Have a great night, guys.